taking up today. It's surely going to be a very interesting topic. So welcome friends once again officially to Miraculous Mondays or Management Mondays. This time to be for 26 episode. This is episode number six and we cover short topics of practice management and or medical legal aspects or ethics in dentistry. So today, Monday, 7th Feb, uh, we are at our usual time of 8, 5, 15, 8, 20. And uh, before I start my presentation again, as usual, my big thanks is due to Lord Almighty who's given me much more than what I deserve. So this is my brief CV, it gives me a little bit of authority to tell what exactly I am actually say, why is the reason that I'm not divulging a few things before you, which, which is the capacity that actually gives me this much amount of, uh, you can say, audacity to cover the same things with you. So uh, what is the topic for today? The today's topic is patient satisfaction. Exactly speaking, patient satisfaction is a very vast topic. Whenever I take a workshop, uh, if I'm taking, a, you can say, an advanced level workshop, patient satisfaction takes more than four to six hours in a short maybe around uh, one to two hours, but I'm not here for one to two hours. I'm just going to give you a very, very unique uh, concept, uh, which is, you can say, embedded in patient satisfaction. But before that, just let me uh, lay out the questions for today. What exactly uh, are we going to discuss? So what is patient satisfaction? Is it a benchmark in our healthcare industry? Does patient satisfaction play a role in the way healthcare service providers are judged these days? And can we actually measure patient satisfaction or what exactly uh, is, is my stand going to be today? So these are a few points to ponder that I'll be discussing today. Of course, uh, we all know that it is being, yes, actually being rapidly uh, recognized as a new benchmark in the effectiveness and efficaciousness of a clinic. How actually you can say we are able to satisfy our patients and retain them, that is a big benchmark. And of course, uh, it, it leads to judgment. Uh, the, the common line says, doctor may have done a good treatment, but I am actually not satisfied from that dentist or doctor, whatever you can say. Of course, I'm saying about the healthcare industry, not exactly the dentist uh, itself per se. So uh, this is the commonest line, even though you have done the best treatment possible, charged less or high as per the patient's desire, Still, the end result might not be satisfaction and a complete one. What exactly is the reason for that? So practically speaking, you can say sometimes the perception of the care can be equally or even sometimes bigger than the quality of care. Of course, there is no substitute for the quality of the care that you're going to accord to your patients, to your, you can say, loyal patients or not even loyal, the routine patients or all of them rather. But sometimes the perception that the patient makes out of your treatment of how he was treated, SAB and WSAB. SAB means treatment-wise, WSAB means behavior-wise. So actually both of these can help a create a bigger oral, you can say a perception which is not actually in sync with your services. So you can say uh, in coming times, we may have actually PSSS, as they say, patient satisfaction scores in the clinic, which can actually become a fundamental in selecting. But then, Let's see the flip side. What actually leads to dissatisfaction other than many other components? I'll be dealing with one component, one such component today. And we commonly see patients complaining. Expect the worst, hope for the best, be prepared to wait, be uncomfortable and be ignored. In one line, actually, the summarization of the long waiting times of the clinic has been done. I remember uh, when I was, uh, you can say, studying I, uh, I used to see my dad actually taking a half day leave to go to his dentist. And I used to ask, dad, I, I heard that uh, the settings are longer. So you have, must have taken an appointment. He said, yes, I've taken an appointment, but still I would have to go and wait for two, two and a half hours there. He said, why don't you go uh, two hours early or uh, two hours late only? Then your designated time, for example, it is 2 p.m. So why don't you go at four, four o'clock straight away? Said you never know, he can call at 2.30 also sometimes, do something and then disappear for one hour and uh, doing other patients and then maybe he'll come back at 4. So I have to be there at my appointment time. So I used to wonder what exactly it is. So probably when I started my clinic, uh, uh, it started, uh, of course, we start the clinic based on our footfall only. We cannot actually afford it. Plus uh, my town being an industrial town, People actually don't value much time in Punjab, uh, broadly speaking, not exactly 
can say finely speaking but broadly speaking people don't value much time in punjab i'm talking in the early 2000s so yes it was a difficult task to make them uh, say come on appointment space appointment time but once it was settled i'm i'm really reaping those fruits for the last 40 50 years ever since i, uh, I my clinic is in 23rd year but my appointment system is in 15th year i would say and strictly speaking and uh, i can vouch for it proudly that 90% of my patients come on time and they that that component of uh, coming on time and not waiting much is a big uh, factor sometimes so yes these are a few points to ponder but what exactly we all know that actually being a dentist has its own set of challenges as well we usually have three jobs on our hand firstly to deliver the best possible uh, quality care then of course keeping the patient informed and then of course the experience should be a1 a class international standard or whatever you can say the patient should be comfortable uh, so that is the bottom line so it is you can actually say i am not a mb i am not a manager how can i actually deliver an experience which is in sync with the patient mindset i don't know the patient so again this tells you the fact that you need to know your patient very well so informing the patient again uh, sometimes patients keep on waiting for long one hour one and a half hour nobody actually acknowledges them in western world it is this is treated akin to an insult that as if we did not exist we are sitting and nobody just acknowledge also that uh, what exactly was there so is it uh, you can say is it enough no this is not really enough so what is the solution so one of the practical solutions is the asap so phenomenon so of course uh, it uh, we all know as soon as you can or as soon as possible is the normal explanation of asap but it's not it's not asap is something different the asap solution actually gives you an insight into the clinic waiting area clinic arena uh, market sumption uh, a european teacher and a counselor who has 35 years of experience uh, now must be close to 39 years of experience i would say she actually summarized four critical components of patient satisfaction which she called as asap of course i'm giving her the due credit and the phenomenon belongs to her so which we can actually which can help us accomplish all the three components number one the quality care number two keeping the patient informed and number three was the comfortable experience to the patient so what exactly does asap stand for so you can say really whether as soon as possible as soon as you can or what exactly it is what what let's see so a stand for acknowledge as for support a for accept p for prepare to act so this is in short the asap phenomenon market sumption has given it and actually speaking uh, this actually summarizes the whole process uh, from where the patient journey starts in clinic and this is not a sole thing this is again these four words cannot actually summarize the whole whole experience but how does it go let's see so a as i said in western world you can say people like uh, you can say compare the same the the waiting part there is no greater insult than to be ignored you're coming and sitting in the waiting and nobody is coming to even acknowledge your presence you felt like invisible and just a small eye contact with the patient just a small wink a happy one of course the mask the patient can't see our smile but yes sir uh, and i wink and i gesture uh, like a thing just to make the patient feel assured that yes we understand we know that you are there and then of course uh, uh, if you are just getting over your job of the previous patient just winding up giving instructions or probably just closing up the previous patient you done the work just a thoughtful look coupled with a smile and actually you can say just a small empathy just a small empathy which the patient needs that yes uh, i have not been forgotten and and trust me just takes one moment just takes one moment and uh, somebody who's actually come to you uh, he is not uh, you can say free uh, anyways he is come because he is in distress he needs you he might be in actual trouble uh, some of the times then the second is support set a no ignore rule in your clinic if the patient has been sitting for more than 15 minutes ideally they should not ideal waiting time is not should not be more than 5 to 10 minutes but if he's sitting for more than 15 minutes without actually someone engaging with the patient you are sure to get a negative review and trust me it takes only a second on the google review the patient's hands are actually on your you can say death warrant in in uh, in her hand 
and she'll immediately say poor service not even been acknowledged uh, waiting for so long the dentist is busy the appointment given the patient not cared for the customer care is not important blah 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 this can continue the rant can actually continue but the rant might just bad actually so just uh, set it probably you can just convey through your staff yourself it is just taking a little longer than expected uh, because of the emergency or because of whatever reason idly speaking you should be having a buffer of 15 minutes between your two appointments so that even if the previous patient gets prolonged you can actually make up for those 15 buffer minutes but even if it goes beyond that you should surely surely do this thing and mention to the patient that this is because this was an emergency we dropped in he was in serious pain so we just took that patient out of turn as a humanitarian on humanitarian grounds and trust me patients won't mind they will rather have more brownie points for you yes he is actually dealing the patient in an emergency god forbid i have an emergency tomorrow i will actually understand that i will be also taken care of in such a manner the best way is offer a glass of water offer a cup of tea or coffee if you are dispensing offer to tune into the patient's tea or favorite tv channel or whatever just for the patient to actually be engaged for some time this uh, this is to be set as a no score uh, no ignore rule in your clinic then third is accept we need to accept the delay sometimes the patient some patients might not react very very kind they will actually they they they'll have their tempers blown out of proportion but then you need to understand that uh, a simple acceptance of the fact that yes it is our fault we duly understand it and we really apologize for it just acceptance of the thing is one thing when you actually try to you can soothe now the tempers on the contrary if you try to you also came late last time humne bhi to aapko adjust kiya tha fir kya hoga agar 10 minute hum late ho gaye is baar that is a wrong attitude actually to you can do that but when you try to shift the blame or the focus uh, the trust is that i got late because i had a emergency you got late because you are doing it genuinely then the, this argument thing may start so it is better to accept with all humility the, the, we all know that medical science dental science is not an exact science so sometimes it does take more than the requisite time more than the allotted time but the the uh, pure thing is to accept that and just con- inform the patient convey the patient that yes this is the reason and trust me the patient who is sitting in the waiting might be in pain he might be actually willing to get a pass through to you early and here he has to wait just so the name that even the one who is in a, a in the chair he also was in a similar distress so we just need you to calm it and whatever way you can calm it because the tongue does the wonders if you can soothe the things with your tongue of course not with an excess of sugar i would say but just a normal sweet tongue can do the wonders patients understand that we are in a healthcare profession we are not surfing internet or watching tv inside we are treating someone we are with a human we are with someone's teeth so it might take a regular that but then make sure that this does not happen every time with that patient or with most of the patients that is to be there then prepare to act for example the procedure you are doing inside has taken more than the desired time and is is supposed to take uh, you can say more than actually uh, even that slot of the patient who just walked in probably it was a extraction with normal extraction with turned surgical and the surgery is going to take some time so the best thing is that always assess how much time are you going to take on the chair uh, of, of the patient in chair who is actually being uh, treated right now and just inform the waiting patient that we are actually very sorry this actually happened uh, suddenly but then uh, we can adjust you in that time you can offer what exactly makes the patient feel comfortable if the patient is ready to wait and if you have a slot later on available just adjust the patient in that slot if the patient says no i'm sorry i have an important meeting after an hour i thought that after my treatment from here i'll go straight away to my meeting offer to uh, you can say adjust the patient in any other schedule that is the best you can do of course that is the reason i always tell don't keep your extractions don't keep your surgical extractions in the middle of the schedule they are normal extractions sometimes they may become surgical so this is the reason to actually you can say go about a certain sequencing of the task that i tell so of course all these things are interconnected when we discuss all these but, but then 
you actually get the the patient gets the confidence you are actually doing the big things well it actually is their uh, is is their thinking part and that is where we 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 actually need to get into the patient's mind that you were acknowledged and we are taking longer than uh, you can say expected and uh, yes it might be an emergency for many of some so just summarizing a little bit what exactly is as ascp acknowledge that the patient is important with your eye contact your gesture a wink or you can say uh, you can say just a movement of your eyeballs and actively engage the patient through the staff member if you can't do that just make a gesture yourself and engage the staff member to convey whatever you want to convey then support can be through you can be through your staff through your kind words gestures and interaction then third accept what the patient reports as their truth and fourth be prepared to act with a kind gesture and action to make you can say the patient should be less stressful and opt for an uh, additional setting or additional time so a simple solution which can actually deliver you can uh, thoughtfully deliver in a very very timely way so what was the topic for today what is patient satisfaction it is the sum sum total of all the patient experiences in the clinic so is it a benchmark in healthcare industry hell yes it is becoming a big benchmark in healthcare industry and uh, not only dental medical but uh, all the you can say uh, sister concerns of uh, healthcare you will say of uh, medical and dental so does patient satisfaction play a role in the way healthcare service providers are judged yes he might be the top notch he might be the expensive but i was not satisfied by that question that may be the commonest answer probably the patient experience was not good your internal marketing factors were not good enough so can we actually measure patient satisfaction yes we can measure it i gave you a formula in my uh, first two sessions s is equal to p minus e david master gave this first law of service a european uh, harvard professor once again so s is equal to satisfaction p is equal to perception e is equal to expectation so s is equal to p minus e the patient walks in a certain kind of expectation to you by a referral by whatever way he just reads about your credential he sees your ad or whatever he walks in with a expectation the way he is treated as <clears throat> a be or as a as i say via your gestures via your dull marketing factors <clears throat> and sorry and your treatment part so both the parts he creates a perception out of that if that perception is more than the expectation the resultant test would be surely positive so yes uh, to summarize with the carry home gyan it has become one of the you can say most important primary goals and uh, it is directly proportional to your success as well and because satisfaction will impact patient retention clinical outcome and of course the referral chain part so and trust me these days the patient's expectations are also on the rise so you can say we all have to set new benchmarks for convenience comfortability transparency quality and there have to be you can say plugging of the gap between expectations and the reality which actually is now being uh, we can say that a benchmark has been created in that sense so sometimes in the quest of improvement you can say investing in new services and processes becomes a tedious task but sometimes that does not necessarily give a 100% result that yes we employed the latest machines so what do i need it i don't need it i was getting good treatment done earlier but ever since you have invested in these two new machines you are getting more busy you are not dealing in the same way as you were earlier this might the patient response to your actual new investment made in the clinic for the comfort of your patient you might have become more mechanical in the clinic but you have become less humane that is the difference you need to understand so we really need to have an honest assessment of our practice and always try to look uh, at uh, the clinic or the practice through the patient lens because sometimes just a few changes can actually bring about a huge difference in the patient satisfaction levels but uh, sometimes bigger ones won't uh, even you can say meet patient eye approval but a smaller one can actually do the trick for you so i hope uh, it was actually uh, uh, putting you into think more and if you have not been following the asap phenomenon uh, do make sure that you follow it from right from tomorrow onwards so my topic for the next session will be continued with this part it will be 10 essential elements or elements of patient satisfaction it will be a continued format in the next monday episode number 7 so till then aap log laddu khaiye as i always say the ashram web series that i have been fond of 
So thank you so much for watching this patiently. Before I stop my share to acknowledge the visitors on my page, let me just uh, give you a few announcements. So I've been running two WhatsApp groups. The, those groups will complete uh, four years in a couple of days time. They started on 9th Feb 2018. So right now the sixth group is almost about to be filled and once it is filled, there'll be no more in goes in this. So if you want to be added, these are purely purely advertisement free groups where even all oh, my own workshops are not promoted. So if you're interested in pure education, just message me, I'll add you. So this is my YouTube channels. Many of my audience have been through with it. You can see YouTube also. So uh, a channel with about uh, two and a half thousand subscribers and about uh, 6,000 plus hours of watch time. So, and 410 uh, videos right now, as you can see on 31st Jan. So if you like my channel, go ahead, subscribe to it. I keep on posting these videos very, very frequently. So do send me a feedback on my number, on my FB page, on my WhatsApp group, wherever you're watching me or in a, in a, any other group or on the, you can say, or on YouTube later on. So do send me a feedback book and brick back. Both would be welcoming in my ear. So thank you once again. And I stopped my share for questions or acknowledging the visitors on my uh, uh, page where this session is actually being streamed live. So hello, Manuji. Hello, Dr. Nimesh. Hello, SP Singh, sir. Hello, Ajay. Hello, Balvinder, sir. Hello, Twinkle, ma'am. Hello, Ramchandra, sir. I hope uh, all of you watch this session and uh, you like this session. So if there are any queries, I'm just waiting for a couple of minutes and then we can actually go about the task of uh, uh, going ahead. So thank you uh, so much. So, thank you so much, Balvinder, sir. Uh, really appreciate your uh, heartfelt feedback. So, any any anyone having any queries, please go ahead, uh, and then we can actually uh, go ahead with our. Uh, I can go to my family after that because that is my family time after all, uh, which I'm just sneaking in at 15, 20 minutes from that. Okay. So okay. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you for watching. We will meet on Thursday with the Thunder Thursday episode with another topic of finance and for patient satisfaction or miraculous Mondays. I see you in the episode number seven next Monday, same time, 8.15, 8.20. So on my page, be there. Thank you. Take care.